Kia ora koutou, and welcome to the special episode of 3 Minute Board Games where we're going to take a look at a cost crisis that's affecting the board game industry. The short version of this is that board game prices are going to rise and potentially rise quite dramatically over the next year or so. There's also going to be Kickstarters delayed and other problems that are going to hit the board game industry. And the reason for this? Well, we've been through a pandemic, we're still going through a pandemic, and that's impacting a lot of businesses and lots of parts of the supply chain. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, it was prompted originally by a post by Patrick Leader, where he talked about challenges that are impacting smaller publishers, as well as Leader Games themselves. And those challenges were around shipping costs. There's also been an excellent follow-up video on this by Quackalo, and I recommend after taking a look at this video, you definitely go have a look at what Jesse had to say on his channel. In fact, a lot of what I'm gonna tell you, I'm cribbing from what Jesse said and putting a little bit of spin on it. So full credit to Quackalo for doing all the hard work I'm about to you know, repackage and borrow, but with his permission, of course. And Board Game Co. and 3 Minute Board Games are planning on doing follow-up videos, one for the international market, uh, because he's based, I believe, out of New Zealand. So to really understand this price crunch and what's happening here, let's look at how board games are actually made, manufactured, and distributed around the world. Games are designed and manufactured in many countries over the world, all over the place, but the vast majority of them are manufactured in one place. And that place is China. So what happens is a designer and a publisher will make a game, they'll decide they need to make a thousand copies of it, and they'll send that game over to a manufacturer, usually in China, who will produce the game. And the reason China is the production hub for board gaming is that's where all the factories that do this sort of stuff are. There are limited facilities in other parts of the world, but China has by far the most factories that do this sort of work, and they definitely have the lowest costs. Now, the reason those costs are low, well, let's just put that on the table. China uses slave wages and is an oppressive regime. And that's one of the seedy underbelly parts of the board game hobby, is the vast majority of what we get comes from a country that is pretty damn shady, to put it absolutely mildly. Now, I could go on a big, long anti-China rant here, but that's not really the focus of the video. And for the point of distribution, it doesn't really matter where the games are made because this is a global hobby. So even if the games are all made in the United States or all made in Germany, that would be fine for people living in the United States or living in Germany, but not for anyone else living anywhere else. And as someone who lives in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which has a very small manufacturing base, it doesn't matter whether the games are made in China, the EU, the US or anywhere else, they've still got to ship to us. So, games are manufactured in China. They're then sent either back to the publisher to redistribute around the world, or to different distributors and publishers all over the place. One of the first big costs that are really rising quite dramatically are shipping costs. So every time these games are shipped from one place to another, the cost of the crates has gone through the roof. So every one of those shipping containers now costing many times more what it did a year ago. And that cost has to get pushed on. And due to COVID and other issues at the moment, there's also extra time in delivery. So things are being held in storage and held in warehouses longer. So there's an additional cost being added there as well. And on top of that, the pulp and paper prices around the world have gone up really dramatically over the last year. Now in Aotearoa, New Zealand, there was a crisis earlier this year when the single biggest wholesaler who distributes wood across all the shops in our country, ran out of wood for the domestic market. There just wasn't wood for people to do construction at home. It just wasn't available. And that's because we were exporting all our wood to China, because China is where the pulp and paper industry is producing a whole bunch of paper-related products. And that's paper and wood-related products. And when you look at a board game, it's cardboard, wooden meeples, cards, all of the paper and wood-based products going into a game are going to have a massive markup on them. Now, any one of these things could be absorbed by publishers into their profit margins. But I hate to break this to people, the board game industry runs on really tight margins. This is not an industry where you put out one game and you retire to the Bahamas with $100 million in your bank account. Publishers work on pretty tight margins, and the games are, for a luxury item, not marked up that dramatically compared to a bunch of other things. Like you'll pay $300 for a pair of shoes that cost $5 to make, but people get upset at paying $100 for a game that might have cost $50 to make. 
Now, obviously there are several flow on effects from these price changes. The first of which is Kickstarter. Now there are many games that costed their Kickstarter games based on assumptions made a year or a year and a half, two years ago. These assumptions are now wrong. Now many Kickstarter games run on even tighter margins than published games because they're really trying to sell that first taste of the game, get it out there and then hopefully sell more later on when the game gets more popular. People get their Kickstarters, they rave about it and then hopefully the game goes to store or does a second Kickstarter. Many of these publishers are not equipped or capable to absorb the costs that are being incurred now. So what does that mean to the consumer? Well, there's going to be a lot of Kickstarter delays. There's going to be a lot of Kickstarters just going, hey, we need more money for shipping. This is not them being assholes. This is not them going, oh, ho, ho, we can get some money off people. This isn't a golden bell sort of situation where the publisher's just being a shit bag. This is a case of unforeseen market forces making the product they had promised you utterly unviable. And you have to ask yourself if you've got three options, wait, pay a little bit more, or have the publisher of the game go bankrupt, which one of those do you feel more comfortable with? The next big thing for consumers is that there are going to be increases in price for already in print games. Current print runs will be costed at a certain amount, but newer print runs of established games the cost of materials, the cost of shipping them, the cost of distributing them, that's all going up. So there's going to be a price hike there. And that price hike is going to double impact people like myself who are in countries like Aotearoa or New Zealand where we think get things double shipped. So looking at the map, things will go from China to a distributor or to the US. Then they have to be sent here. There isn't really a big distributor here. So we get double hit for shipping. Now I already pay double what people in the US pay for a game, that's probably going to go up to two and a half times. And the final impact on consumers will be a slowdown of new releases and new content. So with these prices going up and margins going down, companies are going to be more reluctant about putting out that expansion or putting out that new game, knowing it's going to be at a price point people might be uncomfortable with. So if you've been paying, say $20 for an expansion pack for an LCG, and that's going to jump up to $28, you might be disinclined to buy that expansion. That extra markup could be the incentive for you to go, eh, do I really want to stay into this? So publishers have to make this call. Do I push out products and lose money? Do I push out products and make people pay more? Or do I sit on the product and wait for a while and see if the prices stabilize? And that is a big question. When will this market correct itself? I've got no idea. If I did, I'd be like super loaded because I'd be able to like throw money at these things and gamble on the stock market and all that kind of stuff, which I, I don't do. But we simply don't know. Uh, the pandemic and its flow on effects still aren't known. But the reason for this video is I think this is something we need to be informed about as a community, as a group of people who love board games. We have to acknowledge that the industry is in a bit of trouble here. And that the last thing publishers need right now is you getting on your keyboard and screaming at them because the prices have gone up by 10, 20%. A lot of that is out of their control. So I guess that's the core of this video. Now you know what's happening in the wider board game industry at the moment and what some of the flow on effects will be. And they are just being seen now and it's, it's going to get more noticeable as time goes by. It's just to be aware, to be aware that there is this price crunch, that there are increased shipping costs, that there are a whole bunch of extra fees being added here and there at extra costs. And that the publishers really do kind of want you to buy their game. They, they want people to play their product. They, they also want to make money. And I'm asking you to take this information on board and just make an informed decision next time you see a Kickstarter delay post next time you see a price increase, next time you see that something's delayed and it's not gonna be to you when you thought it would be. It's not because the publisher's being an ass. Well, it might be, but it's likely not because the publisher's being an ass. It's because board gaming is a small luxury hobby industry dependent on global shipping in the middle of a pandemic. And I hope that we as a community can approach this challenge with a little bit of maturity. And a reminder that Three Minute Board Games does not do paid content. Support us on Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.